Hello world, Shelly here, and today I've got a get ready with me trying out some new makeup. This one's gonna be a chatty one. I just wanted to give you guys an update of where I've been, what I've been doing, what the future holds. Here's your anti-clickbait spoiler alert, nothing major. <laughs> Don't worry, there's no like, listen to the end for my big announcement. No, yeah, nothing like that. Uh, we're just gonna chat and <laughs> put some makeup on and I'm gonna get ready for work. So, I probably won't talk a ton about the makeup, but I do want to show you the new stuff that I'm planning to use. I picked up from Physicians Formula the Butter Cake Bronzer, and I've been using for the past few weeks, actually, this L'Oreal Unbelievable Brow Longwear Top Coat. For my brows, I also picked up a Revlon Kiss Cloud blotted color that's a lip color i have an ilia mascara to try the limitless lash mascara i picked up a new liner from maybelline and it's got like an octagon pencil shape to it which i love that oh that just feels so lovely it's called the hyper easy no slip pencil so i'm going to try that as well I also have the Flower Beauty Jet Set Invisible Powder Spray. I have not tried any of these except for the brow product. These are all brand new to me. So those are the new things I'm going to try. Also going to dip into my Pat McGrath eyeshadow palette. I think today I'm just going to roll with my Estee Lauder. This is the Double Wear Sheer. I have to wear masks at work all day. so. I don't really go too heavy on my complexion, although I do like to have something going on because I feel like I look just flat and washed out if I don't go bronzer at least. So, that, oh God, as I drop things, oh my goodness. Ah, I haven't filmed in like a week. It's, this is just, yeah. So, speaking of not filming in like a week, let's dive into this. I don't have any primer on because when I apply with fingertips, I usually just don't roll with primer. So, I am right now 11 weeks into the fall semester, and we are back on campus. I teach at JMU, if you did not know that. We're back on campus, and I worked from home for a year and a half. And we are now back on campus. So I'm almost three months into no longer working from home. When the pandemic hit and lockdown happened and we started working from home, March of 2020, that freed up a bunch of time for me. <laughs> I commute an average of eight to 10 hours a week and it's not just the driving. I work at a campus that is a, it's closed to vehicle traffic during the day. So we have to park on the perimeter of campus, and so you have to walk, and depending where you're able to get a parking spot, which on my side of campus is quite difficult, you may be walking, you know, a half a mile to get to your building. So my commute involves walking as well. And so I commute an average of eight to 10 hours a week. So when I started working from home, I gained, you know, eight to 10 hours a week. You know, that's more than an hour a day of just extra time, which initially was just used to stress eat. <laughs> but after I got over the stress eating and went back to having a somewhat normal routine while I was working from home, I looked at expanding some of my streams of income. I like side gigs and things like that. And I started looking into expanding my options. I have not been wearing concealer. I've just been taking my foundation up under my eyes since I'm masked anyway and you really can't see a whole lot of my makeup. So that's why I did not put concealer on. So one thing that I did was I decided that I wanted to start my nail polish business. And this smells really good. <laughs> you know Physician's Formula. It smells like cake. Let's try this, let's, let's try this. I don't know what I'm gonna do because there's like 
all different colors and I think I'm probably gonna stick to the top half because there's some shimmer down here and I don't really want to get into the shimmer right now oh whoa that's really powdery this might be a hot mess did that ooh, that did pick up a lot of product let's just let's just go easy let's go easy go easy so I wanted to start my nail polish business and I did I launched that a year ago actually I just had my one year anniversary this is really pigmented holy cow I'm gonna need to brush this out somehow and I had wanted to run that business at you know the extent of doing approximately eight to ten hours a week of work and not commuting anymore allowed me to do that so last fall I started that and that has gone gangbusters. That took off way more than I ever expected that it would. I mean, to the tune of, my team has sold over $30,000 of $12 nail polish in a year. And that's just a few of us. So that went gangbusters. That's going really, really well. And it's really exciting and I really enjoy it. There's a component of all of this that I've always wanted to run a store ever since I was a little kid and I never knew what kind of store it would be. I still don't, but I've always had that retail love. I love retail displays. I love product photography. I love packaging things and shipping them. I love inventory. <laughs> I know, weird, but that so that business really is playing into things that I've wanted my whole life even though I'm doing it from home at the moment so there was that then as the year went on the the time between like last November October November like a year ago October November and last summer like June ish face not Facebook YouTube ad revenues went gangbusters. This shade's a little too orange for me, but it's a nice formula. It did blend out nicely. I'm not sure the color is quite right for me, but anyway, we will keep going. So YouTube ad revenue went gangbusters and I, it was primarily because everyone was at home. There were lots of lockdowns during the pandemic and everybody was home and watching YouTube. And so my ad revenue went up by like 70%. It almost doubled. Like it was really, really big. We're going to go Clarence. And I, of course, always had more aspirations. You know, if you've been around for a minute on this channel, I have been talking about this app idea. I have a couple app ideas actually for years now. And I just haven't had the time to do them. I've prototyped them out and if you're a member of the fishbowl you may have seen last year in uh, Discord we talked about it and I showed you guys where I was at on the prototyping of these apps and I just didn't have the time to work on them. Well since the ad revenues were going so well I hired an editor to edit my videos for me which saved me I spend six to eight hours a week editing videos for this channel. So, Natasha Denona. So I hired a video editor and that was amazing. It saved me so much time. It gave me that time back to start working on other things like the makeup app. I built the Uncommonly Beautiful website because I have plans to build more online courses that are similar. You know how I've got the free foundation course for dry skin, choosing foundation for dry skin. That was kind of like my test platform to see if I could figure out the software to make that work. And, and so I've got all that going on, right? Using the time that I'm saving from having an editor, but having an editor costs $600 a month. Like it's, it's, <laughs> it's a very nice car payment. Uh, and summertime rolled around and YouTube revenues tanked and it wasn't just me it's everybody that's the view time and and people were not sitting at home watching videos anymore the pandemic was kind of chilling out for a little while it was getting safer to be out and about people were traveling or just being out with friends and family and 
revenues went back down to where they were before they had gone up. So I could no longer afford <laughs> to have an editor. So a couple months ago, uh, I think August, when I went back to work, basically, good timing, right? Uh, I stopped paying an editor and I went back to editing my own videos. And because I'm back on campus and I went back to work at the same time, I average that between editing videos and commuting physically to work and not working from home, I'm spending about 14 hours a week. If you average it out just on seven days, it's like two hours a day of time that was just vanished. Yet I had increased my obligations to different projects. You know, I started, I wanna do that podcast. You, If you follow me on Facebook, you probably have seen, or on Instagram, that I've started making soap. That's a whole nother project that I will tell you guys about, but Two hours a day is just eaten out of my life by things I, I can't control. And the other things in my life that I'm working on, namely building out my makeup apps and my podcast and the extension to Geek Out of Water, the Uncommonly Beautiful extension project, and my nail business, and what I hope will soon be my soap business, I don't want to give those up. Like yet there are not enough hours in the day. And this channel, I don't wanna give it up. These are all things that have become staples in my life and I want to pursue them and continue them. So what do you do? Well, let's, let's do brows. <laughs> Cause uh, that's what we're gonna do. This stuff is good. It's not as good as the Anastasia Brow Freeze, but it's, good in a pinch when you just want to get out the door and that's kind of what my makeup's been for work lately so it doesn't quite have the same hold as the brow freeze and i think it's really meant more as a top coat after you've done a fill with a pencil or what whatnot i don't usually do that when i'm rushing out the door but it's good i like brow freeze better but i do reach for this quite a bit lately so, where was I? Ziba is right off camera. You can't see her. Maybe you can. She's right here. She's not supposed to be on my vanity. But here she is. So, what's a girl to do? Should we talk soap? Let me just tell you about my soap adventure. A friend of mine and I... We like doing crafty things. She's way better than I am. But we like crafting. And I've always wanted to run a shop, as I mentioned. I'm going to start with this pink color. So we started learning how to make cold process soap. And I absolutely love doing it. It's scientific. It's a little bit dangerous. It's creative. It is a whole lot of fun. I am having a blast making soap. And we do plan to sell our soaps. And we actually have a master plan, somehow, some way, of opening a shop eventually where we would sell our soap and other crafting things, you know, that we make. But we'd also have space for other makers and creators to sell their stuff without having to have the overhead of running an entire shop. And maybe we would even have space for, you know how like if you are a business entrepreneur and you work from home and you can rent office space like for a day or for a week and have access to a conference room or whatever. What if you had that for crafting? where you can use a space like that to do your crafting work. And so that would be like big picture goal, like long-term goal. Anyway, and we plan to, you know, have a website and all that, but we'd also like, you know, if we get a good enough space set up to have a YouTube channel that goes along with how we make all of our stuff and there, we, 
we have big, big plans for this. And it has been an absolute blast learning to make soap. My thought is that we're probably going to launch it probably by the time our initial soaps are ready to go, because they have to cure for six to eight weeks, four to six weeks, eh, somewhere around there, before you can use them. Uh, we're looking at like a Black Friday-ish launch for our soaps. I will keep you guys posted if anyone's interested in handcrafted soap. But, so that's the other thing I've been doing. And really that happened when Mel Thompson passed away. You guys may know, because I had posted it on Instagram and talked about it a bit, that I was really hit by that. It really made me sad and I did not know her personally but it really hit me I was I I grieved for several weeks and after that I kind of started to get back on track with my YouTube posting but then I I fell off again because midterms at work happened and it's just really busy and I think the bigger thing that impacted me after Mel passed away was that I really was reevaluating what I'm doing with my life. That's Ziva's tail you just saw. <laughs> I have to decide on the color as I get into this deep reevaluation of my life. I think I'm gonna play with these two here, this orange and this teal to kind of match what I got going on with my shirt. So there's this this need to reevaluate what's going on. Now, my teaching job, I've been teaching for 23 years at the college level, and I love it. I love the teaching part of my job. And if you work with me, no, I'm not leaving. Don't worry. Anything that's going to happen will be years away. But <laughs> this past year and a half, has been incredibly difficult. And I think it's partially because when you care about the success and well being of so many people, namely my students, but also my colleagues and, and friends that I work with, but when you care so much about their success and their well being and their health, and then something like a pandemic hits. Should I do blue? That's gonna be wild. No, I'm gonna do that on the lower lash line. It's just, so many of my students have dealt with so many major, major issues throughout the pandemic, whether it's just sickness and health, whether it's loss within their families, whether it's just the stress of the pandemic and the trauma of everything that's happening and the anxiety that goes along with it. it they, there have been some major, major struggles that my students have gone through. And to empathize with that has taken me to a place of emotional exhaustion that I can't even fathom. Like, I, I, I can't describe it. I, it, it's, it's debilitating and exhausting. I'm going to go brown. And I've been doing this for a long time. And it's hard to say that I'm actually thinking of doing other things with my career, but I've been doing this for a long time and I'm tired and I'm not doing it. It'll take me years. Literally. I'm on a five to 10 year plan. If I even manage to do any of the entrepreneurial things that I'm planning, but so this is not changing my life anytime soon, but just the thought of doing something different of being an entrepreneur, has sparked so much joy and excitement and hope in me for the future that I don't think I can really ignore that. And I don't know what 
that means. Like, I don't know if, if I'm planning to retire from teaching earlier than, you know, 15 years from now when it would be customary. I, I don't know what that means, but I can say that between YouTube, my uncommonly beautiful ventures that I'm heading in that direction with the podcast and my apps and online courses for that kind of stuff and my nail business and the soap business, I'm not willing to give any of them up. I want to pursue them. And how that impacts the rest of my career is yet to be seen. I don't know how I'm going to do it all. I'm going to have to get very serious about time management and get more strict in my limitations and what I say yes to and what I say no to in terms of just everything in general. But I want to do some things. <laughs> I want, I have plans, you guys. I have plans. I have major plans. I think in the short term, what's going to end up happening is I'm going to have to, I'm probably going to cut back to two videos a week on YouTube. Probably temporarily, because I do like the three video. Ooh, that's really pretty. I do like the three video a week structure. I mean, I've been doing it for five years. I really, it works well for me in most cases. And I think it's a good amount of content. I may need to cut that back to two if I want to explore these other ventures and get them off the ground in order to make that work. And I now fully understand when <laughs> creators like Taylor Wynn and when she was going through all of her medical struggles, which are of course a totally different scenario, but she had s cut back her posting schedule and, and stopped conforming to a required number of posts per week. And she has expressed many times how that helped her mentally and with her own mental health and took the pressure off of everything. I think I will still have a regular schedule because I work better with a schedule to hold myself accountable, but I totally understand where she's coming from now in terms of just the pressure you put on yourself to, to stick to a schedule. Like I have felt like such a failure these past three months because I can't stick to my three video a week schedule. I just, I can't do it all. And this, <laughs> when I started this channel, my goal was that within five years, I wanted to break even, not break even over all the money I spent the whole time, but I wanted that fifth year, by that fifth year, to be break even, where the money I spend was covered by the money I made through the ad revenue and everything. And I'm... I'm gonna be pretty close. If I'm not break even, I'm gonna be close to break even. Not on my previous years, I mean, just for context. I've spent an average of about $7,000 to $8,000 per year on makeup and skincare for used in this channel. So this year, I should be a net zero. Last year, I was only like four grand in the hole, which, I mean, that's like a 50% increase. It was pretty, pretty fantastic. This year, I might, I might break even, and that was my goal to hit, this is my fifth year, and to hit break even at five years, that was always my goal. And now that I'm probably gonna hit it or be very close, what now? <laughs> I didn't think about what happens after that five year mark. I didn't think about what my goals for the channel become. I, I didn't think about it. I, I didn't plan for it. And maybe I should have, but I don't think I really thought it would last this long and become what it has, I, but it did. And so now I really need to decide how I move forward goal-wise. And I think what that is, I'm gonna try this liner. I think what that is, is I, I do move forward and my extensions into the podcast and the uncommonly beautiful stuff, which if you're not aware of what that is, that whole venture, part of it's a podcast, part of it is the apps, the makeup related apps that I am working on building and 
part of the podcast is, so this channel is a lot about, you know, your external beauty, you know, the makeup, the skincare. Uncommonly Beautiful's podcast angle is beauty from the inside, your mindset, positive thinking, life hacks, productivity, like, like all of the inside stuff that's beautiful. And so I think where I go from here is continuing my geek out of water makeup stuff and skincare stuff, expanding on that with the apps that I'm working on that I really need time to focus on, and expanding the beauty on the inside with the uncommonly beautiful stuff. This liner's not as smooth as they make it sound like it's going to be. However, it's opaque, it's going on easily, and the tip is super, super, super tiny, so it's really easy for waterline. I do think I like it. I do think I like it. It's got an easy grip. I think I like it. But I hadn't really planned what happens next when I hit that five-year mark, and that's where I'm at, and it's kind of funny that I didn't plan that. My camera's about to die because we're hitting a 30 minute mark. This is the longest video ever. Hold please. All right, let's try this Ilia mascara. So that's where I've been, what I'm struggling with. I, I'm, I'm gonna say it. I am going to cut back to two videos a week. I can't believe I just like actually decided that. I've been thinking about it for months. <sighs> That's a relief just to say it. Oh my goodness, okay. I don't know if I'm going to post on specific days. I'm just gonna say, we're just gonna cut to two videos a week for now. But what I think that's gonna gain, this is really pretty, you guys. I think what I'm gonna gain from that is the ability to do some of these other things that are also things that a lot of you have been asking for. I get asked about that app, I get asked, oh, here's another one. Did I finish the makeup artist course? No, I didn't. I didn't have enough time, was part of it. I had one module left. They wanted you to do makeup on somebody else and I wasn't comfortable in the state of the pandemic doing makeup on a stranger. So at that, you know, back when I was doing this, and I dropped the ball. I never talked to them to find out if we could work around that. I understand why they would want that because when you get certified, they're certifying that you are a makeup artist to do makeup on other people. And depending on the rules in your state, you know, some states don't require licensure. So that is enough for you to do makeup on other people. So I totally understand the the makeup school wanting to at least test you on that. But that's not why I'm, I did that course. I really just did it for my own learning and I learned a ton. It's a fantastic program, but am I gonna finish? Probably not because unless that's another thing, you know, I have these things that just hang over me and I feel so guilty that I don't deal with them. But really what I should do is contact them and see if I can finish that module on myself and do it that way. Because maybe they'll say yes and then I can just finish it and be done. Uh, but I haven't done that because I just, you know, we kind of self-sabotage sometimes and I let my guilt just fester and then it's almost like a martyr syndrome. Like I feel bad about it, but I'm also not doing anything to fix it. <sighs> Like I said, I've been struggling, guys. So I don't know. I may finish that. I may not finish it. There's there's part of me that just wants to say, forget it. I'm not finishing it, and that's it, and just let it go. It might be too late to finish it anyway. I haven't touched it in almost a year, but that's the update on that. So I like how this eye makeup turned out. It's a, it's a bit much for a random Wednesday, but it's okay. It's okay. I don't like this bronzer color, you guys. This bronzer's really, uh, I'm kind of wishing there wasn't so much bronzer on my forehead. Try to make it go away. 
I guess it's okay because it's a warm toned eye look for the most part, but. <sighs> so that's where I've been. That's what's going on. That's what's happening. I'm going to do two videos per week, which means I already have the next two episodes of the Uncommonly Beautiful podcast in my head. I just haven't had time to record them. And part of the thing is that I want to do them on video, which means I have to have a full face of makeup and everything done, and I haven't had time. If I would just get over all of these requirements and just do it messy, it would get done. And that's another thing I'm working on. Dial down the perfectionism here and just do it messy. Oh, I forgot my lip. Let's do the lip. So really not much is going to change around here, except that hopefully I will be able to accomplish some of the value added things I've been planning to do for you guys and get some of that work done. The makeup app especially, I've been talking about it for years. All right, this is supposed to give you like a blotted sort of messy look, but I don't understand this color does not go with this look at all. I don't really understand That's weird. The product itself is kind of a messy look. Not in a bad way. It's a powdery kind of a look. Which doesn't give like full opacity, which I think is the point. Like it's that blotted look. Ignoring the fact that the color's not right. It feels like a cross between a powder and a balm. I can see too much of my lip color showing. I don't like it. No. No, that's not going to work. I, I feel like there's just too much of my lip color coming through in a weird way. It's not cute. Maybe if you have a cute lip color. I don't. My lips aren't cute on their own. <laughs> No, we're not. No, no, mm. no, that's a pass for me. I think that'll work really nicely if you have a, a cute lip color that looks all juicy when it comes through. Colourpop Lux Lip Oil. This is also not really the right shade. What should I wear? I do have a Physician's Formula Organic Wear Tinted Lip Treatment. Yeah, this one's a little... Let's try this one. At least we're in the right color family. Yeah, this just feels like a cross between a gloss and a balm. Cream lipstick feeling. It's supposed to be like super, super hydrating. What are the ingredients? This is the shade Ginger Snap. Organic coconut oil, jojoba oil, shea butter, vitamin E. Yeah. I think that'll that'll work. That'll work. I almost forgot to try the flower setting spray, jet set invisible powder spray. Alright, let's try it. Oh, that's interesting. It does look, it looks like powder. Oh, that's interesting. Highly fragranced. Kind of floral. Smells nice. Kind of like baby powder-ish. I don't know. Wow. Do you see how like airbrushed that looks? I see you, flower. Interesting. Very interesting. I'm going to have to keep you posted on this one. I just got my mop cut again. So here's what I'm doing with my hair, you guys. All the updates. Remember when I first cut it from being really long to like 70s shag cut and I had cut bangs? Well, that's when I discovered just how curly my hair has gotten. My bangs are just crazy curly. They're a little bit, well, they're, they're grown out now, but we had cut bangs like up to here. And that's how my hair started. 
when I went and got it cut short, I asked for a cut like Winona Ryder in Reality Bites, 90s cut, short in the back, she's got it like chin length in the front, but of course all this hair was bangs. It was really short. So now I'm trying to grow that out to see if I want it to be long in the front like that. Even though most of the time I do plan to wear it behind my ears like she does in that film. But I don't know. I still might end up cutting all of this short again, depending how I like it, if it grows out. But that is where we're at with the hair. So glad I cut it, you guys. So freaking glad I cut my hair. Love it short. <sighs> There's your updates. Longest video ever. This is gonna be like 40 minutes long. <laughs> if you stuck around this long, bravo. Thank you, thank you, thank you. All that's to say, I'm gonna keep on plugging along. I hope you will stick around and have patience when I don't have enough time to do all the things I want to do. But because I want to grow into so many different entrepreneurial areas, it's going to be a struggle. And I think it's gonna be a struggle that I love because I love creating content. I love making things. I love retail. I love. It's tapping into so many things that I love that I need to explore these things. I need to keep building on them. Does that replace my current career? Maybe someday. Maybe it won't. I don't know. I have no answers for that. But uh, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to pursue this and we're going to see where we end up. So thanks for sticking with me. Thanks for being along for the ride. Thanks for being my escape and my safe, happy place when I am struggling. <laughs> you guys really keep me going. This, this, I'm so glad for this community. I really heartfelt truly am. So let's do this. Let's do this. Let me know, what are you excited about? What do you wanna see me focus on? If you could have anything in the world from my content creation, what would it be? What do you want to see? What do you want me to make? What do you want me to do? Let me know, I'm curious. Let me know in the comments down below. And as always, thanks a lot for taking some time out of your day to geek out over makeup with me. Come back twice a week for, wow, I've been saying that same line for so many years, I'm gonna have to figure out my new outro. Come back for new videos every week? I don't know what I'm going to say. One thing that will not change, I appreciate your time and I hope you guys all have an awesome day or night wherever you are in the world. Take care of each other. Bye-bye.